Hi, this is Steve Lentini, and I'm your host for the podcast, Different Thinking for Different Times. This is Season 3, Episode 8. So when you think of the infinite universe, the infinite qualities, the infinite principles of a universe, when you ponder in your in your brain, when you think about the infinite, that it goes on forever and ever and ever. And when we think we get to the end, it goes on again and again and again. We call it a, a universe to give it definition. Our, our brains, if you've been listening, you know I call it the acorn brain since my near-death experience. We have difficulty pondering the concept of something infinite. So imagine pondering what created that, the creator of that, of something infinite. And so there's another reason to help you consider my experience and why I call our thinking the acorn brain. And and it's necessary for us to learn and grow. And that's what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to fall, make mistakes, get up again, find a better way to do it. Some do, some wake up, as I talk about in my book, Wake Up, Jump Into Your Life, and on my teachable course, Wake Up. I talk about some people are asleep and they live totally stuck in a physical existence without believing they have any power. That's victim mode, victim thinking, instead of master thinking, master of circumstance, instead of victim of circumstance. So one is a woe's me, I'll never get out of this. Look at my my life, right? The, like the country songs that say, my dog died, my wife left, the bank took the house, my business closed, woe's me. Then I crashed my car and got drunk and I'm in jail. <laughs> okay, so you get the concept of living in struggle. So there's that's one level of people that are asleep. And that's fine because they also show us that. That's the gift that they bring. They show us what it looks like to live in that state. Then there's people that are extremely successful. And those people, folks look at their life from the outside and think, wow, I mean, look at their life, how great it is. And despite the fact that they have so many material things and so much money, there's plenty of incidents of failure and and trouble in their lives. When you look into their lives, they certainly have all had tragedies and or mistakes and errors along the way. Many of them share the story, which is great. So again, there we get to see that success is not what it looks like in this life. And it doesn't validate us. It doesn't make us who we are. So for the people that are just focused, for example, on external success and on things, for example, they're trying to impress their neighbors or their friends, they're constantly going to uh, plastic surgeons to change their body because they want everything to look perfect and to be great, and they want to show that. Just think of what that is to live like. Now, for, for people that have found the infinite, moment, living in the moment, and they live from the inside out, they live totally differently. And many have not had near-death experiences, but they they control their response to things in life, and they surrender to the moment. They live in the now. They, they don't become angry as often or reactive as often as people who are in the victim mode, for example. So if you're a master of circumstance and not a victim of circumstance, a master of circumstance lives from the inside out. Life is best lived from the inside out. And that's a choice in every moment. And where the divine resides, where this this creator that created the universe with concepts that we cannot grasp with principles and laws that we don't understand. And we still haven't figured it out, even with all our modern tools. And as I've discussed before in previous episodes, 
even when physicists and scientists think they finally figured out what created this, we can simply ask, well, what created that that created this? And again, that whole thing will go on forever, forever. So to understand the laws that are operating in a universe is wonderful. And that's how physicists can help us. They can help us learn what the secret talked about, how to manifest the lives that we want, the ones that we desire. Like Thomas Merton said, uh, the biggest human temptation is to settle for too little. So physicists can help us by proving all the laws of living, for living in a universe. And, and hum, humankind, mankind, would advance remarkably. And there's no reason why we can't all have the lives that we imagine. Right? Imagination has no limit, just as the universe has no limit. And to help you understand where I'm coming from when I say nothing from here was there. There were no sexes, no religions, no religions, no judgments. To even think there were no nations, no warring, even no mention of evil or sin, because what created this universe that we can't even conceive of in our mind is greater than that. Think about that. Why would it be involved in the trivial matters that we get ourselves into with our little acorn brain, our physical limitations? We are like the ants that are next to a bridge abutment, or even as microbes. Do microbes know what they live next to? Because they might be living next to you on your desktop or on your hand. And do ants know they live next to a bridge abutment or next to a, a big rock? Do they know it? That's our existence in the universe. We are so tiny. And because we have ego and hubris, we think we're all it. Which leads us to all the judgments we have. Even in today's society, you can see how each, each side, especially our political leaders, they point their fingers at everybody and make these outrageous statements against each other. And then they wonder, why we all don't act more civilly toward each other. Well, our leaders don't model that. Our leaders are filled with small-minded, limited thinking, and yet they stand up and say they have the answers and make the other side wrong. And it doesn't matter what side you're on. I chuckle at all of it because having been with the infinite, been one with everything and nothing, I know that the way that we can, I can help people is to have people consider living in a universe, what living in a universe is, and consider just in quiet time that when you think you've got to the end, it continues again infinitely, that that's what this thing called a universe is that we're living in. And then perspective, I can change it to, well, consider that we're on a garden planet in relation to the size of the universe, the infinite, maybe you could think of a marble. It's probably even smaller than that. So here we are living on a marble, floating, suspended, in a void, in a vacuum, circling an exposed nuclear fusion plan at the exact right spot. We call it a sun. Again, we we give everything a term to make it comfortable in our mind. Imagine expanding your thinking way beyond the what I call that acorn brain, that small-minded, limited thinking, and to bring it with you everywhere, to leave everything and everyone a little better than we find them, and to further discover the laws that operate in a universe, right, that keeps us suspended, a marble suspended, a marble with everything required for life, suspended at the exact right spot, circling that nuclear fusion plant that we call a sun. 
And you could even bring it down to just remember, remembering and reminding yourself you live in a miracle. And of course, we have all these fearful thoughts and uh, and and uh, the news medias and the politicians continue to push fear. And that's gone through, gone out throughout the ages when there were kings and serfs. There probably hasn't been a population that at some time in history wasn't enslaved. If you lived under a king or under a duke or under some of the medieval leaders and beyond, or going back to the times of uh, the Dark Ages, why was it called the Dark Ages? Most people were enslaved. So think of it as living in a kingdom that had an infinite leader. And we have no idea what that would be like until we leave this existence. And then the purpose of this existence is to find that place where we rise above all these little small-minded, limited thoughts and limited urges and small-minded thinking where we don't take care of one another. And I'm not talking about let's have a government that just prints money and no one has to go work, but for us to find our purpose. Like when you watch nature, look around the animal kingdom, everything has its purpose. In fact, if we didn't clean up things that get killed on the road, nature cleans them up. You and I, we all have a purpose. And there's something about rising to the higher place. I, most of us have that urging. And to, to serve with our gifts, making this place called the earth a better place. And to overcome all small-minded thinking. Ponder this universe, the infinite, the idea of infinity, and then imagine and ponder what created infinity. That to me is amazing. And it's beautiful because you'll discover it when you leave your body. Stop the white knuckle ride. I think E.E. E. Cummings said to finally feel freedom, relax your grip and dive into the space. Thank you. So if you want to come on the show, if you'd like to challenge me, if you'd, I, I'm glad to interview you and we can record it for later posting on the podcast, reach out to me, steve at stevelentini.com, steve at stevelentini.com. And remember to ask the question of yourself. Does this sound like small-minded, limited thinking? What would the infinite do? Thanks.